let us focus to this great experience of the Lord that the risen Lord is now in us. Let us experience him. He has given his resurrected body, resurrected body and blood, the glorified body and blood. And that is the same glory with which he will be coming again. So the one who is going to come again in another way is already here in us. Already we received him. अंतिम दिन में चिलाऊंगा दर्शन्त रुठाच्यास दंडा चासे बचाऊंगा The receiving of this body and glorified body and blood of Christ make us to have the experience of the resurrection at the end. That is the way our life will be transformed. So let us once again focus in our heart believing that we experienced the mystery of incarnation and the baptism of Jesus and the public proclamation of Jesus through which he proclaimed the kingdom of God and he forgave our sins he took our sins through his passion and through his death. He removed all our uncleanliness and through his resurrection he gave us new life. And through his ascension he took us to heaven and through his coming again he is giving us the resurrection of our body and then we will remain in heaven with body and soul. Let us praise and thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody, let us praise and thank God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So in the, in the book of Revelation chapter, chapter 1, verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God. The one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. He is same yesterday, today and forever. 
Now today in the Holy Mass, in the, in the, in the Gospel, the apostles asked Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. So our faith is in, the, in this mystery of Christ. Mystery of Christ. And when we our faith increase in the mystery of Christ, we experience Christ. And as I said, the one who the one who eat him become like him. The one who eat him become like him. In Catechism of Catholic Church, paragraph. 795 Christ and his church thus together make up the whole Christ Christus totus the church is one with Christ the saints are actually aware of this unity. Now there is a quote from Saint Augustine. Let us rejoice then and give thanks that we have become not only Christians, but Christ himself. Shall we repeat this? Let us rejoice then and give thanks that we have become not only Christians, brothers, please speak louder. <laughs> Everybody, we have become not only Christians, but Christ Himself. That's a fact. Do you understand and grasp, brethren? God's grace towards us, marvel and rejoice. We have become Christ, for if he is the head, we are the members. He and we together are the whole man. The fullness of Christ then is the head and the members. But what does head and members mean? Christ and the church. Okay. Oh, Holy Spirit. Let us once again pray to Holy Spirit. Now, what is Holy Spirit prepared for us now? What is Holy Spirit want to talk now? Let us ask Holy Spirit. Everybody, oh, Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Okay. So, our focus is evangelization. In evangelization, we have already understood, first of all, we must speak or we must give who is Christ, what is Christ. Okay, I will say a story, a story to make the matter very light. The story is like this. It is, an event, it is something happened in one of the universities during the convocation of the universities, some very great uh, dignitaries, well-known, reputed scientists, etc., come and give a convocation speech. In one of such speech, the one who came was a very Doctor, doctor, double doctorate in some physics. 
and he wanted to prove through his speaking that god is not existing he want he started speaking through so many ways and a theistic that god is god never exists and after the whole presentation as if he is victorious in making this presentation that god do not exist but then he said what is your response what do you want to say all children the university students they are all stuck with an now not to say anything for few seconds there was such a silence all are looking here and there nobody is saying anything at last a boy from the last bench raised his hand i want to say something okay please come and uh, he came a very small boy maybe one of the students he had a shoulder bag like our missionary bag <laughs> he came up on the stage from his bag he took one apple which he might have brought for his uh, tiffin or to eat in between he took that apple and in front of the whole people and to looking at this scientist he started eating this apple some people might have felt this is a crazy boy <laughs> he is enjoying eating this apple and this <laughs> scientist doctor doctor so and so is wondering what is he going to say what do you want to say he is not saying anything he is eating this apple and after he finished eating he asked a question sir what is the taste of the apple what i eat he said how do i know you only eat it exactly you say god do not exist how do you know if you have not eaten that god how do you know the taste of that which you have not eaten i know the taste of god whom i believe and whom i eat and such everybody stood up and gave a standing applause to this boy hallelujah this is evangelization that was a video which became very popular in the social media i am for more than 30 33 years i have not studied any theology i have not studied philosophy but i have experienced christ i eat him i drink his blood i am experiencing holy spirit i am experiencing the word what he speak and i am able to speak to anybody boldly about christ from my first hand experience and of course although i have not learned theology i had the chance to be with many theologians and i have learned so much from the theological teaching of the church from the teaching of the saints 
teaching of the doctors of the church teaching of the pope teaching of the apostolic teaching i don't preach or teach anything which is not the teaching of the church so what i want to say this experience of jesus is important in that experience of jesus first and most important part is a experience of his his transformation of our life how do he change our life have you felt a change in your life or are you same now i can show you quickly the whole bible lead us into a change the whole gospel speak about a change a transformation a transformation of the people a transformation jesus brought now take an example of saint paul saul saul came with the so strong conviction that these christians have to be killed all what they are speaking is wrong he got a arrest he got a summons from his leaders to go to damascus and arrest the christians and kill them but on the way on the way to damascus something happened he was encountered with christ an encounter with christ he heard a voice saul saul why are you persecuting me he is a lord who are you i am jesus of nazareth oh then immediately his eyes he became blind he fell down and somebody had to help him he said go to damascus you will be guided and the lord told to a man called ananias go baptize him ananias said what saul he is a persecutor he is a persecutor of the church yes i will show him how much he has to suffer for i have chosen him go and we know what happened ananias went to saul and said my brother saul the lord jesus told me to baptize you to anoint you to be filled with you the holy spirit so that you will know his will and you will listen to his voice and so it happened from that time he is something different he went to damascus see my dear friends you please don't talk i am speaking something very important and it makes me so upset when you don't listen and you keep talking and uh, distracting me please 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 when i am distracted you are the loser 
I am here speaking not with a note, completely on inspiration. Please respect the work of the Holy Spirit and respect this old man. I am like your grandfather. <laughs> okay, so pay attention. We have only today and very important subject, very important. This man who wanted to arrest Christians in Acts of Apostles chapter 9, 20 says, he soon began to preach in their synagogue. What did he preach? What was he preaching? He began to, he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues that he is the son of God. Can you imagine the seriousness of this? He wanted to arrest Christians in Damascus. But on the way he was completely transformed, changed. And now he's preaching Christ. Hallelujah. And not in a Catholic church, in a synagogue. And what was his first preaching? That Jesus whom you crucified is the Son of God. What was the allegation of the Jews against Jesus? He says he's a Son of God. Anyone who claimed to be a Son of God must be killed. But in such a synagogue, Paul is speaking, Jesus is truly Son of God. This is called evangelization. So how this is happening? It happened through a supernatural power of God transforming a person completely and making him what Jesus would say to be a new person, new person, born again. How do we can have that? We can have that. Now I will go to, I will take you through the whole Gospel of St. John very quickly. Every chapter of St. John's Gospel is speaking about such a transfiguration, a transformation. Let us start from chapter 2, chapter 2 of St. John. What is happened in the chapter 2? In fact, the song I have written about Mary, the song I have written was focusing on that water changed to wine. The original text was like this, come to our heart like you came into Cana and tell your son that our wine is over. So we generally think Mother Mary interceded in the difficult situation of that family, that in a marriage function of a family, if the wine is over, such a bad situation. Suppose in our family there is a marriage feast going on, suppose chicken biryani was serving, by the half of the people eat, there is no more biryani. Then what will be the situation? What a shame. So Mother Mary looked into that, their lack and told her son that they have no wine. But that is, of course, one of that. But 
That is not the main point. The main point, why the wine become, water become wine? St. John has written in John chapter 2, this is the first miracle Jesus performed to show his, his glory, show his glory. Chapter 211 says, Jesus did this as the beginning of his sign in Cana. It is a sign in Cana, in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, revealed his glory. And his disciples began to believe in him. So what is, what is the glory? Jesus has come to recreate, to transform an existing creation to a new creation. You see, water is oxygen and hydrogen. And what is the molecules of wine? Anybody knows? Molecules of wine are CH3, CH2, OH. You can write down CH3, CH2OH. It is the molecules of ethyl alcohol. There is no water in the wine. The molecules of wine is CH3, CH2OH. Molecules of water is H2O. So the H2O Molecules of H2O, Jesus, by a simple blessing or a mental prayer, a wish, he simply wished, silently let this water become wine. There was not seen any, any uh, outward prayer. Not necessary. Even whatever he wish will happen. And the molecules of water, the substance of water, change to another substance. That is called transubstantiation. The substance of the one creation, the water, so radically changed to another substance. H2O is changed to CH3, CH2OH. This is what Christ experienced. This is what Jesus Christ wanted to do into the humanity to everyone, everyone. And for that, he had so many possibilities. So first of all, we must know that is the way each one of us have to be transformed, transformed. So, the same water changed to wine, he changed the water to wine, but in the Last Supper, he changed the wine into his blood. Here the water substance is changed to wine, transubstantiation, and in the institution of the sacrament, he changed the substance of the bread and wine to his body and blood. And whoever received that, their life will be changed. Their life will be changed.
so this is what faith in jesus through believing in jesus we must desire oh lord change my heart oh lord we sing all these things so in the years of formation if at all you faithfully and meaningfully participate in the divine liturgy that itself will change you change your life a transubstantiating change will happen in our life so that is why we call the formation time formation now this what happened in chapter 2 in john's gospel already written in chapter 1 now you can note down the scripture passages in chapter 1 words 12 chapter 1 12 says but to those who did accept him he gave power to become children of god to those who believe in his name so whoever believed in his name whoever accepted him their life changed who were born not by natural generation but by human choice nor by a man decision but of god their life although their life is biologically we are all children of our parents father mother my biological parents but when we are brought into the church through the baptism when we accepted christ when we were baptized a change happened in us we become children of god children of god when we were in our mother's womb we were in a water when we were in the mother's womb we were in a type of water that is called living water that living water which we call is amniotic fluid that fluid that living water was giving us life if that living water is dry the child would die that is the symbol of holy spirit after the birth biological birth we were brought into the church into another living water that is the holy spirit so that living water is known as the womb of the church the womb of the church so we are entered in the womb of the church and born from that water and we become children of god we become children of god so that is the chapter 1 now in this chapter 1 after this teaching we can see what happened to the first apostles first apostles were the first five apostles met jesus in chapter 1 so first was john and andrew john and andrew were the disciples of john the baptist so john the baptist used to speak about jesus as disciples of john the baptist he told them i am not the main person but the one who is going to come behind me is the one who you should follow he will be the one who will baptize you with the holy spirit he is the lamp of god who takes away the sin of the world aha uh -huh. okay and next day when jesus was walking there john the baptist said we call look look that is he that is going oh. so john and andrew said oh, 
then John the Baptist, shall we, shall we go to him? Of course, go. I must decrease, he must increase. So already John and Andrew heard from John the Baptist so much about Jesus. And John the Baptist already introduced to the world he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And then John and Andrew ran behind Jesus. And Jesus is walking fast. They are also walking fast. Suddenly Jesus turned and asked, What do you seek? That is the first word in the Holy Gospel as Jesus' word. What are you looking for? And they said, Where are you staying? Now, a very familiar word for all of you. What is that? Come and see. Say, everybody. Come and see. Come on, everybody. Come and see. Come and see. <laughs> now, you might be remembering your come and see. And then, John and Andrew stayed with Jesus. And now you can see an, a transformation already happening. As soon as they met Jesus, like the water changed to wine, they were completely changed. Two persons have two different charism. John's charism is a contemplative. John loving Jesus and he don't want to go anywhere. He's stuck with Jesus. He loved Jesus. He became one with Jesus. But whereas Andrew, Scarism is an active apostolate to go and proclaim. He says, I cannot sit here. I must go and tell everyone. Whole world is searching about the Messiah who is going to come. What are you talking? I must go now. And he ran. First of all, he ran to the shore. He wanted to tell his brother Simon. He said, oh, Simon, we found the Messiah. <laughs> hey, what? You found him? Where is he? Who is he? Go, go. I will take you. See the excitement. What made this excitement? Because he met an encounter. The encounter he had with the Messiah. We made him the first proclamation. The first proclamation of Andrew was this. We found the Messiah. The whole Israel was waiting. It is time for the Messiah to come. Where is he? Nobody knew. But he was already there. And then he called Simon. And Simon, he brought Simon to him. That is, Jesus seeing Simon, he immediately said, Simon, son of John, you will be called Kephas. Kephas means Peter, rock. At that time itself, he was so, his call to be the first pope, the head of the apostles, the head of the church was clear. So now, John, Andrew, and Peter. And after that, the next day he, de he decided to go to Galilee and found Philip. And Jesus said to him, follow me. And then he followed him. And Philip went to Nathaniel and said, here is 
Nathaniel and said, Philip was from Bethany, I don't know. He said, we have found the one about whom is written in the book of Moses. We found that man about whom the book of Moses written. <laughs> How do they understand this? Now, yesterday I told you a word revelation. When you prayed for someone, you got, we can now use this word, we got a revelation about that person. The Holy Spirit revealed something. Revealing means, revealing means revealing. That is, the veil is removed. Now, this is a veil. Reveal means uh -huh. understand that is called a reveal. So now the whole scripture was under the veil, and slowly, 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 slowly it is revealed. Revealed. So the Holy Spirit. Reveal it. So that is what exactly happened. Nathaniel said, uh, Philip says, about whom it is written in the book of Moses, we found him. <laughs> How is it possible? Moses' book is written thousands of years back. How can you understand? This man is that about whom it is written. That is what we all need. A eh? Holy Spirit's action of understanding mystical, spiritual meaning of the scripture. Spiritual meaning of the scripture. Okay. And then Nathaniel said, so he said, who is he? That is Jesus of Nazareth. He? The son of Joseph. Oh, what good can come from Nazareth? Come and see. Okay, I come. And Nathaniel came. So Nathaniel was sitting there and having a dream. Probably he was seeing or reading the story of Jacob's dream. Jacob was seeing a dream, a dream about a ladder coming from above, right into the earth, touching heaven and earth. He was wondering, what is this ladder? That ladder is Jesus Christ, the incarnation. God become man. So Nathaniel brought to Jesus, and Jesus said to him immediately, I saw you when you were under the fig tree. Hey, how do you saw me? I saw you means I have revealed you an understanding about that ladder when you were under the fig tree. So anyway, to, to make the story short, in the first chapter we see the five of the apostles, even as they met Jesus, the encounter of Jesus changed their life, changed their life. Now, chapter 2, we understood. What is chapter 2? The water changed to wine. Now, everybody, raise your hands and praise. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, louder. Okay. Now, I will be very fast. Chapter 3. Chapter 3 begins with 
the great scholar Nicodemus came to Jesus and in a night he said no one can do these signs unless God is with you so which sign what sign he's talking about the sign what happened in Cana immediately after chapter 2 chapter 3 he says no one can do such signs that unless God is with him uh -huh. so Nathaniel started understanding this son of carpenter Joseph's son Jesus is not an ordinary person now Jesus said Amen, Amen that means yes, yes I said to you no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above so he said how can I be born from above now should I, I am an old man so Jesus said unless you born from the spirit and what so that is exactly a changing through the Holy Spirit he did not understand so that is exactly about a transformation of the whole life okay now much greater things is spoken in chapter 3 about that and chapter 4 Jesus came to a woman at noon time the Samaritan woman the first reaction was I will not give you water you are a Jew I am a Samaritan please go away don't ask me water complete negative you know if anybody asks a little water at noon time in the hot sun we must have a mercy to provide him <laughs> I suddenly remember I used to be in Gujarat in Gujarat Port Victor that is the other side so there I was traveling in a train so in the train I was feeling so thirsty and I asked the nearby passenger can you give me a little water so he had a water can you asking water from me I said yes I am a Muslim I said no problem I am a Christian oh, okay then drink <laughs> then I said why are you asking no here nobody drink water from a Muslim a Hindu don't drink water from a Muslim then he has shown me look at that railway station there is two taps Muslim Pani Hindu Pani it is written <laughs> so even after 2000 years that is the situation in many parts of the world so those days Jew will not drink water from Samaritan that is the general but Jesus break all such barriers and going to that woman give me water okay now make the story short in few minutes this woman's life changed she found the Messiah she and she had an encounter with the Messiah she left her water jar there and ran to the town of Samaria to proclaim Christ the first religious evangelizer the woman evangelizer an encounter what happened in her a change the water changed to wine the water changed to wine and chapter 5 there was a man lying at the poolside 38 years in the Bethsaida pool when the water move somebody first jump in that person will be healed 
but there was nobody to take this man into the water. Thirty-eight years he was lying there. That is five years or eight years before Jesus was born. <laughs> so Jesus went to that man. Do you want to be healed? Now the living water came to him. To make the story short, Jesus said, take up your mat and walk. And this man who was paralyzed, his body completely changed and he got up. And the Lord told him, take up your mat and walk. But the Pharisees found fault there. Today is Sabbath. One should not, it is forbidden to take up the mat on Sabbath. So this is the problem. They made the law divided to more, more laws without the compassion and love. Anyway, this man in his life is the water changed to wine? Is the water changed to wine? Why are you not answering? Why? You didn't understand what I said? Are you sleeping? Is this man's life? Can you wave your hand? Please awake, please. <laughs> this man was lying there 38 years. The encounter with Jesus changed his life. A radical change like water changed to wine. Yes or no? Yes. Chapter 5. And chapter 6, Jesus gave the theology of this change. I am the living bread. Whoever eat me, their life will change. And chapter 7, I am the living water. Whoever is thirsty, drink from me. His life will change. And chapter 8, come on everybody, please once again, wave your hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Young man, erase. Come on everybody, say that. Young man, erase. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am going to apply that so that you all come out of sleep. Okay? Once again. Young man, I said to you, erase. Yes, very good. Now, where are we? Chapter 8. Oh, come on. Raise your hands up. Father is taking a photograph. Come on. Come on. Oh, already taken? Just let us wave our hands to Father. Hallelujah. 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 Active photograph. Yes, my photograph. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, chapter 8. Please, now, important point. Chapter 8. Situation is becoming very tensed. A woman who was caught in adultery. According to their law, if any woman was caught in adultery with a witness, testimony of a witness of two people, then they can stone her to death. So, the people are going behind her, kill her, stone her, with big stones, such size, like a coconut size. And they finally, this woman ran and came to the temple area where Jesus was teaching. So now these Pharisees 
got another idea. Let us see what Jesus is going to say about it. So they want to test Jesus. He said, Jesus, this woman is an adulterous woman. What do you say? According to the law of Moses, she must be stoned to death. Now they want to test him whether he obey the law of Moses. He is speaking about mercy, mercy, mercy. What is he going to do now? Now see the encounter with Jesus as well as how his wisdom working. Everybody, come on, look here. Please look here, please look here. <laughs> I am seeing every one of you. If you change your eyes from my eye, I know you. What are you doing? <laughs> please look here, very important teaching. Very important teaching. I have made an animation film about this. You must watch it. That is my best film, my best film. Now, this woman was crying. This woman is now sure that they will throw this stone on her head and her head will split and she will die. She was almost sure. So with her death cry, she is crying, Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Now Jesus is first not saying anything. So they started shouting, According to our Lord, she must be killed. Come on, say something, Jesus. And then Jesus started writing something down here. So I assumed what Jesus was writing is, a new law has come. <laughs> a new law has brought. I brought a new law. So one man saw this. He said, no, no, I don't want to saw any new law. We have already a law of Moses. We don't want any new law. Now Jesus got up. He, Jesus raised his face up and said, if any of you who has no sin, let him cast a stone at her. Any of you, come on everybody, say it louder. If any of you has no sin, let him cast a stone at her. Now imagine the situation. They were already ready to stone her. The big stone is in their hand. Say, Jesus, he will going to kill her. He will kill her because it is our law. Now Jesus says, if any one of you have no sin, let him stone her. Now, that touched their heart. Whose heart? Look, look here, don't look there. Look here, look here. See, you see my action, I am a dramatist. Come, she's such a strong, such a strong, big stones they are carrying. Now, that stone, their hands came down, stones fell down, and one by one, they went away. Who changed here? What change happened? Change happened in whom? Change happened in the Pharisees, who are the executioners of Moses' law. They could not stone her because nobody is without sin. Everybody has a sin, the original sin. And slowly everybody went away. And Jesus and this woman, and Jesus looked at her and said, My child, no one has condemned you? No, sir. I too don't condemn you. Go, don't sin anymore. Now she also changed. So the transformation through encounter of Jesus happened in the heart of this stony heart of the Pharisees.